Well, welcome to Revival Fires TV, and we have Sandra Selma with us today. And Sandra um, is connected with the Elijah House Ministries of John and Paula Sanford, and has responsibility of going around some of the different nations and just looking at. Um, the whole area of inner healing and how she can facilitate and help others to move in inner healing. And so Sandra, um, just to say welcome Thank to you. today. And, um, and just starting with that really, I mean the whole thing of inner healing, people say, yeah it's great, best thing that ever happened to me. Other people say, well why do we need all this inner healing? I thought the cross had done it all. Yeah it is a, a consideration for people and and, you know, we really don't necessarily like to use the term inner healing. What we prefer is that process of sanctification and transformation. And the sanctification really is bringing to death those things within us, that sin. You know, and, and uh, like John Sanford used to say, you know, at conversion, that, that sin got a death <laughs> blow. But it just keeps cropping up. You know, those yeah. bitter roots spring up and defile us and they defile the people in our life. And so that sanctification is that process of bringing to death that sin that, that uh, trips us up, that sin that, that tries to hinder us. Mm -hmm. Those things in our lives, those patterns, those obstacles or devices of the heart that okay. keep us yes. from becoming more and more like Christ, you know, right. being conformed into his image. Yeah. And then the transformation process is, is that coming to life, because it doesn't end at the cross. That's the good news, right? The, uh, the cross brings those things to death, and yet that newness in life, that transformation, being transformed into the image of Christ, that's Wonderful. our goal. Yeah. That's what we want. And so that's the goal of inner healing, really. Okay. And, and so following on from that, you already mentioned it, bitter roots. Mm. And... You know, some people would say, well, again, why do we need to keep digging down? Um, but what is the whole um, basis on which, you know, we start looking at the area of bitter roots? And I suppose then if you're looking at roots, you're looking at sowing and reaping and yeah, all yeah. of those things. So just explain <laughs> to us that. Well, well, some of the, you know, the questions that people have about the process of healing is, you know, why should we look at the past? It's all done at the cross. And... One of the things that we really emphasize is we don't deal with past issues. But what we look at is present day fruit in the lives of um, Christians, you know. It's the, when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, when, at conversion we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and through relationship with Him we begin to produce fruit. You know, the love, the joy, the peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. And if we have that fruit evident in our life, then we know that we're drinking nurture from that mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. And we're, you know, we're growing in Christ and we're drinking nurture from relationship and from His creation, from His Word. But sometimes in, in, in our life, there is fruit that's inconsistent with the Holy Spirit. It's right. unbecoming, a yes. child of God. And we kind of wonder, where is that fruit coming from? Well, if there's a fruit in our life that's, you know, unbecoming, and, you know, we could say if there's sin in our life, yeah. those repeated patterns, those things that we don't want to do, then we know that we're drinking nurture in that area from something other than the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And usually that something else is a pool of bitterness or resentments, unforgiveness, uh, those places in our heart where we've bitterly judged the people who have wounded us or hurt us. Yeah. Um, those inner vows that we make, those promises, I'll be strong, I'll take care of myself, I'll never let anybody hurt mm -hmm. me that way again. Mm -hmm. All of those things uh, become just this bitter pool. And when we drink from that pool in that area of our life, then we produce bitter fruit. Mm -hmm. And if we see that present day fruit in our life, that's what we look like and that's what we deal with. Now sometimes it's connected to something that happened years ago, but we believe that if there's present day fruit in our life, it's not really a past issue. And we need to look at it. Mm -hmm. It's not resolved. If, if those things are resolved in our life, if they're truly past, there's good fruit. Yeah. You know, it's part of our testimony, it's yeah. part of our overcoming, it's part of our authority in Christ, those things that we've overcome. But if there's bad fruit in our life, then we simply ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where is this rooted? Mm -hmm. And allow Him to take us into that place and to bring those things to resolve. And we bring them to resolve through um, healing, healing of the heart, healing yeah. of that unresolved trauma, the un, you know, the unhealed hurt, the unhealed wound. Yes and then bringing to death our sinful responses to what's happened to us. 
You know, it's important what happened to us. God wants to heal our heart. Jesus came to heal the mm -hmm. brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. But really what keeps us stuck in those patterns, keeps us stuck in, in the sin, in that childish behavior that we can't put behind yeah. us, is our sinful responses. It's our sin. And so we, we bring the bitterness, the mm -hmm. unforgiveness, the... Um, you know that desire for revenge to the cross. Yeah, one of the one of the things that you brought out here was from um, Jeremiah six fourteen, where mm. you said they healed, um, they have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Mm. And yeah, you, know, you talked about beyond the bandage. Yeah. yeah. And and so what you're saying then is that if there has been um, experiences, traumatic experiences, or there's been experiences where we have felt pain or we've been wounded, mm -hmm. um, that those continue to have repercussions in our lives. Um, and some of those would be then the bitter roots and those things. But you also said something about threshold covenants. Mm, yeah. And um, go into this thing about the door again. Yeah. And, and I suppose for every one of us, there's this, when something happens to us, something's being crossed. So could you explain that? Yeah, many times the traumas that we experience is someone crosses a boundary or, you know, does something to us, takes away our no, you know, it, mm. the, the horrible thing that we didn't want, right? And, you know, just because a, a hurtful thing happens to us, that doesn't mean that we'll have bitter fruit from that. Um, but it depends on our response and if there's healing and if there's comfort and if we're able to release those things to the Lord and, and receive healing in that place. What we deal with is, are those things that are unresolved, those things okay, that are yes. producing present day fruit. But one of the keys is uh, the Revelation 3.20 scripture I think yeah. you're talking about where Jesus said, you know, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I will come in unto him and will sup with him and he with me or abide with yes. him and he with me. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we don't understand the language of that scripture, but it's really covenant language. Mm. And, in, in you know, in our culture, we'll eat with anyone, yes. right? You know, yes. you invite me out and say, yeah, let's yeah. go and we eat. But in biblical days, they would not eat with an enemy. Eating represented and symbolized covenant. And Jesus was saying, if you open up that door, I will come in and I will make covenant with you. I will protect you. I will keep mm. you. I will heal you. I will be there for you. You know, I'll be your friend. Yes. I'll abide. I'm not just going to come in and hurt you in any way. And there's also another, um, another thing about that scripture in that if you cross a doorway, you cross a threshold. And there's also something called threshold covenant. And the thresholds were very sacred in biblical days, and that's where agreements were made, where covenants were made. And if someone crossed your threshold, then he was under a, an agreement to honor you, mm -hmm. to bless you, to protect you. And, um, you know, a thief wouldn't cross a threshold. They'd come in another way. They'd go through okay, a window, yes. right? And, yeah. Or they'd break in, but they wouldn't cross that threshold because it was sacred. And there was a responsibility on the part of the person who owned the home. When a guest came in, they were obligated, they were under covenant to protect them with their life. Mm. And so one day I said, Lord, what does that mean for us when we invite Christ into that door? Yes. We, we hear His knock at the door of our heart, those things that we've kept hidden, those things yeah. that we haven't wanted to look at, those doors that we've closed to Him. What, what does that require on our part? And, you know, how, how could we lay down our life? And I thought, oh, it's all about sanctification, mm. that willingness to die to our sin, yes. that willingness to confess our sinful response, and even to die to those old ways that we've used to try and medicate our pain mm -hmm. or avoid our pain, mm -hmm. you know, the busyness yeah. or the pornography or the, you know, the food or the alcohol or the drugs, all of those ways that we try and comfort ourselves or to make the pain go away, and they don't work. And so we lay those things down, and Christ's covenant with us is that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Mm. He is the God who heals, Amen. and He cares about us. But He's such a gentleman, and He knocks on that door, and He says, Will you let me in to those things that you've kept hidden for so long? And there have been people that have come to me in their 60s and said, You know, I've never told another person this. This happened to me when I was four, or this happened to me when I was five. And they've kept the secret for 
you know, 55 years. Mm. And it's like that pain has been shut behind this door. Yeah. And they're seeing fruit in their own lives, and they're seeing fruit of how they've hurt other people. Yeah.